Difference Between Rima and Logos By Watchman Ney In the New Testament, two Greek words are used to describe the word. The first word is, Logos, which generally refers to the word in a broader sense. The second word is, Rima, which, although translated as, word, in scripture, carries a different meaning from, Logos. Logos, encompasses things that have been eternally determined and are used objectively. It aligns with the conventional understanding of, word, in Christianity. On the other hand, Rima, specifically refers to spoken words, carrying a more subjective connotation. Let us examine several passages in the New Testament where Rima is used. In Matthew 4 verse 4, Jesus declared, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out through the mouth of God. Here, the term word used is Rima, not Logos. When we assert that the Bible is the word of God, we are referring to Logos, not Rima. Can we say that man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God recorded in the Bible? No. We are not negating the value of the written word of God, rather, we are emphasizing that Logos, the word of God recorded in the Bible, by itself, is insufficient. Allow me to provide an illustration. Suppose a messenger arrived to inform a mother that her son had been struck by a car and was critically injured. In response, the mother immediately opened the Bible and coincidentally turned to John 11 verse 4, which states, This sickness is not unto death. Encouraged by this verse, she felt a sense of peace and even began to rejoice. However, upon reaching the accident scene, she discovered that her son had already passed away. Does this mean that what is recorded in the Gospel of John is not the Word of God? Certainly not. It is indeed the Word of God, but it represents Logos, not Rima. The word that she grasped was not the specific word spoken by God in that particular instance. Both Logos and Rima represent the Word of God, but the former is God's Word objectively recorded in the Bible, while the latter refers to the Word of God spoken to us on a specific occasion. Romans 10 verse 17 states, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the Word of Christ. In this verse, Rima is once again used, not Logos. This implies that we can believe when Christ first speaks within us. John 3 verse 16 is a verse that many of us can recite from memory, perhaps having known it for 10 or 20 years. Is this verse the Word of God? Certainly, it is the Word of God, but it is Logos. However, there comes a day when we read this verse and it takes on an entirely different meaning than ever before. For God so loved the world. Now, it is not just that God loves the world, but that He loves me personally. That He gave His only begotten Son. God did not give His Son only for the world, but for me individually. That everyone who believes in Him. It is not that someone else believes in Him, but that I believe in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is I who will not perish, and it is I who already possess eternal life. In this moment, the word becomes Rima. God speaks the word to us, and simultaneously, we receive faith. Therefore, we must pray to God, saying, O oh God, if you would be gracious to me, I pray that you would always give me Rima. This does not imply that Logos is useless. Logos has its definite purpose, for without Logos, we could never have Rima. All the Rima of God is based on Logos. We cannot deny that John 3 verse 16 is the Word of God. However, when the Logos of God transforms into the Rima spoken by God to us, we receive faith, and the entire matter is settled. John 6 verse 63 declares, The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Did the Jews not possess the Logos of God? Yes, they were familiar with it and could recite the commandments of the Old Testament proficiently. However, it was of no use to them. Only the words spoken directly by the Lord were spirit and life. Only Rima carries the essence of the spirit and imparts life. Mark 14 verse 72 records, And immediately a rooster crowed a second time.
And Peter remembered the word, how Jesus had said to him, Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And thinking about it, he wept. In this passage, Peter recalled the Rima that Jesus had spoken to him. The Rima was brought to his remembrance. While Peter was in the midst of telling a lie, suddenly the Rima came. The very sentence of the Lord resurfaced in his mind. Rima is the word that the Lord has spoken, and now he speaks it again. In Luke 1 verse 38, Mary said, Behold, the slave of the Lord. Let it happen to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In this verse, Rima is used. It wasn't just a word of prophecy from Isaiah 7 verse 14, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, but a specific word spoken to Mary by the angel, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, Luke 1 31. Because Mary heard this Rima, she received strength, and it was fulfilled. In Luke 2 verse 29, Simeon said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your slave in peace according to your word. The word in this verse is Rima. Before the Lord Jesus came, God spoke his word to Simeon that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Christ. But on the day he saw the Lord Jesus, Simeon said, Now, Master, you can dismiss your slave in peace according to your word. Simeon received Rima from the Lord. It was not based on a particular chapter or verse in the Bible, but on the word spoken to him by the Lord on that day. Simply having a word from a specific chapter and verse in the Bible is not sufficient. Only the word that the Lord speaks to us is truly meaningful. Rima reveals something to us personally and directly. It shows us what we need to address and what we need to be cleansed from. We must earnestly seek after this specific matter because our Christian life is founded on this Rima. What word has God genuinely spoken to us, and how has He spoken to us? We must remember that today's Christianity still relies on personal revelation. If the Lord does not speak within us, it is not Christianity, nor is it in accordance with the New Testament. Luke 3 verse 2 states, During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. The word in this verse is also Rima. In Luke 5 verse 5, Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but based on your word, I will let down the nets. The word in this verse was spoken by the Lord specifically for that occasion. It was the Lord personally speaking to Simon. This is Rima. The Lord did not speak in a specific chapter and verse of Scripture, commanding Simon to let down the net. If someone attempted to walk on water solely based on Matthew 14 verse 29, they would surely sink. That is not the word the Lord is speaking today, although He did speak it on that day. It is true that the word spoken by God in the past and the word He speaks today carry the same authority, they have never changed. However, what matters is this, is God speaking that precise word to us today? In Luke 24 verse 8, it is written, They remembered His words, Rima. But what does Rima mean? Rima is the living word of God, spoken previously and now being reiterated by the Lord. It is the word He speaks anew, full of life and power. An example of this is seen in Acts 11 verse 16 when Peter recalled the word of the Lord, saying, John baptized in water, but you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit. While Peter was preaching to the household of Cornelius, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon them, and the word of the Lord came to Peter. It was not a mere recollection from memory, it was the Lord himself speaking to him, reiterating, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We must cherish the reality that the Lord continues to speak to us today. He not only spoke in the Scriptures, not only to Paul and John, but He is also speaking to us in the present. The Word of the Lord has never ceased. Whenever someone stands up to speak for the Lord, they should expect the Rima, the Living Word. Without the Lord speaking to us today, we would be true failures. How many times have we preached without the Lord uttering a word? It is not that there was something wrong with the message, it simply lacked the specific rima, the fresh word from the Lord. 
The problem with the church today is the scarcity of the living word of the Lord. Instead, we often find ourselves with stagnant doctrines. There is a genuine deficiency in direct communication from God. We have settled for the transmission of human preaching rather than seeking personal and direct communication from the Lord Himself. It is disheartening to witness many lives lost under sound doctrines alone. May God have mercy on us and grant us the Rima. May He speak to us personally and directly in this day and age. Only when we possess the Rima can we progress and supply others with the living water they desperately need. What we truly need is the living and spoken word of God. In God's eternal plan, the church is without sin. It has no history of sin and is entirely spiritual, completely separated from the earthly realm through Christ. However, if we examine the actual history of the church, we recognize that it has not been entirely separated from worldly elements. Much of its composition has been influenced by earthly factors. How then will Christ bring the church to perfection? He will accomplish this by cleansing her with the washing of the water through His Word, the Rima. We have previously discussed that water symbolizes life, representing the life released through the non-redemptive aspect of Christ's death. Christ utilizes His life, manifested in His Word, the Rima, to purify and cleanse us. What does it truly mean for Christ to cleanse us through His life and Word? First and foremost, we must perceive the church's problem from God's perspective. The issue lies not in receiving insufficient portions of Christ, for the Christ we have received is abundant. Rather, the problem arises from our entanglement with things other than Christ. The church, according to God's will, emerges entirely out of Christ, free from sin, flesh, and natural life. However, our present condition reveals that alongside the portion of Christ we have received, we still hold on to many things that are not of Him. It is for this reason that we require cleansing. What does cleansing truly mean? It signifies a subtraction, not an addition. If cleansing meant adding something to us, it would be comparable to dying. In Genesis 2, Eve did not require cleansing because she represented the church in God's eternal plan, untainted and pure. However, if we believe that we do not need cleansing today, we deceive ourselves. God intends to bring us to a state where cleansing becomes unnecessary, but presently, we still require cleansing. How does God accomplish our cleansing? He does so by infusing His life through His own Word. Often, we may not be aware of the specific areas in need of cleansing, but eventually, the life dwelling within us refuses to let us remain unchanged. In due time, His Rima penetrates our hearts, revealing what requires attention and purification. It is both the life within us and the Word of the Lord that intersect. There are instances when we engage in actions that appear righteous according to doctrine, and our intentions may seem valid. However, an inner stirring persists, persistently nudging us. Ultimately, the Lord speaks to us, and the Rima, the powerful word of the Lord, resounds. It communicates that a particular matter needs addressing and cleansing. Here, the life within us and the word of the Lord merge. Thus, our purification is achieved. Sometimes, the sequence is altered. Initially, while involved in a certain matter, we may not sense anything amiss, in fact, everything may seem fine. However, when the Rima arrives, the word of the Lord speaks to us first, indicating the error, followed by the demand from within to address it. This is our daily experience. Either the Lord's life prevents us from pursuing something, and then the word arrives, or the word comes first, and subsequently, the life compels us to deal with the matter. Yet, it is always the cleansing power of the water in the Word that sanctifies us. Consequently, our growth and progress hinge upon our attitude towards life and Rima. If we experience any inner stirring, we must not ignore it. We ought to pray, Lord, grant me the Rima to understand how to handle this situation. If the Lord first provides the Rima, speaking to us initially, we still need to beseech Him for the supply of life to address the matter. If we give these matters due attention and do not treat them lightly, 
the Lord will cleanse us through the washing of the water in His Word, leading to our sanctification. In the eyes of the Lord, the Church's cleansing by the washing of water signifies that the life of Christ purges every aspect that does not stem from Him. The natural life and anything unrelated to Christ must be purged. Sanctification can only follow after cleansing, and the foundation of cleansing is the Lord's Word, the Rima. Without knowledge of the Lord's Word, we cannot undergo cleansing and sanctification. Since the day we became Christians, where has our understanding originated? Does it come from external sources or from within? Do we perceive God's will internally, or is His will still external to us? Many challenges arise from this very matter, the deficiency in God's Word. The reason the body of Christ cannot be built is because we merely have something outward, not something inward. The whole basis of the Christian faith depends upon the Lord speaking. The growth of the church also depends upon the word which the Lord speaks. Therefore, the central point of our prayers should be our longing for the Lord speaking. Oh, may the Lord speak to us. The Lord's word being spoken to us will enable us to attain the eternal purpose of God. The church today is not like Eve in Genesis 2, because the church has fallen. So the Lord must cleanse us by the washing of the water in the word. The church according to God's will and the church in experience are two entirely different things. The church in God's plan is completely without sin, it has never known sin, nor had any history of sin. It is transcendent far above sin, without even a trace of sin. It is altogether spiritual and holy out of Christ. However, the church in history has failed and is fallen. Today the Lord is working among fallen men to bring them back to the church of His original will. The Lord desires to work among people who are fallen, corrupted, and desolate, full of sin and filthiness, so that He may obtain a church from among them. He intends to restore and recover them to what He purposed in eternity past, so that He might have that which fulfills His desire in eternity future. In His magnificent work, the Lord is using the words He speaks as the instrument to bring the church back to God's original purpose. Oh, may we not lightly esteem the words of the Lord. We must remember that knowledge is one thing and spiritual stature is quite another. All doctrine, teaching, theology, and knowledge are of little use if they just flow from one person to another. True growth depends upon our receiving the word directly from God. God is using His Rima to do His work, and He desires to speak to us. Therefore, if our purpose in reading the Scriptures is solely for knowledge, it is indeed pitiful. If this is so, we are finished. The real value of the Scriptures is that God can speak to man through them. If we desire to be useful in the Lord's hands, we must be spoken to by the Lord. Whether or not our building is spiritual depends upon whether the Lord has spoken to us. Knowledge and doctrine are of no spiritual use. Only the Lord speaking in us is of spiritual value. How can we ever be satisfied with knowledge and doctrines while the church is in a fallen state, when she has failed God and is blind to His will? May God have mercy upon us and be gracious to us. Oh, may we have such a prayer, Lord, we pray that You would speak to us. All the words that are from without, all the words that are passed on to us by others, though they have been spoken a thousand or ten thousand times, are of no use. Only Rima is of any value. If we do something just because others tell us to do it, we are keeping the law, we are not in the New Testament. A person with a clear mind can divide the book of Romans into sections, such as salvation, justification, etc. But within him there is a great deficiency, God has not spoken to him. A man may have knowledge and yet be without God's word. Many people think that knowledge of the scriptures and understanding of the doctrines are spirituality. There is no such thing. Bible knowledge can never be a substitute for spirituality. Only God speaking to us, personally and directly, is of any real value. When God speaks to us through his word, we are enlightened, through His Word we are sanctified, and through His Word we are made to grow. We need to know what is dead and what is living, what is mere knowledge and what is spiritual. Whatever is not living has no spiritual value. 
If we have Rima, the living word of God, we can be cleansed and sanctified. Spoken by Brother Watchman Ney, in his book entitled The Glorious Church, Chapter 3